Ferrari has announced the latest addition to its flagship GT range, the Dodici Cilindre, which translated means 12-cylinder. The 12-cylinder will be the last ever Ferrari naturally aspirated front mid-engine GT. Or will it? Today we're going to take a look at the new 12-cylinder, its design cues and what this flagship GT means for the luxury Ferrari brand. The 12-cylinder is the latest in the Ferrari GT range and was launched in Miami May the 3rd 2024 to commemorate 70th anniversary of Ferrari in the American market. Taking a bit of a dive into the back history of the Ferrari GT range beginning with the 365 and that's pertinent and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. You've got the 365, then came the 550, then the 575, then the 599, the 599 GTO, then the F12, the F12 Tour de France, the 812 Superfast, the 812 GTS, the 812 Competizione, and now the Ferrari 12 cylinder. A 12 cylinder is the next advancement up from the 812 Competizione, or you could say from the 812 range but it's not a limited edition model it's only limited by production run and the perception is because certain components are made on certain other production runs i.e the Pero Sangue, the engine block of the 12 cylinder is created or is, pro is produced on the same production line as the Pero Sangue, it's perceived that there will be a limited run of the 12 cylinder although this hasn't been officially announced the gt range has always been the flagship model for ferrari but why is that well, if we go all the way back to 1947, the whole production run for Ferrari was launched with a front mid-engine V12, which was the 125S. The 125S was launched in 1947. It was a 1.5 litre, 118 brake horsepower car that could travel up to 130 miles per hour. Now, let's just think about that. Back in 1947, Ferrari's first production car could travel to a speed of 130 miles per hour at only 118 brake horsepower. That is pretty impressive. The name of this new GT model, i.e. Dodici Cilindre 12 cylinder, relates to the F140 HD engine that is fitted to the 12 cylinder. The F140 HD is the latest incarnation of the fantastic V12 power plant that is used in Ferrari's GT range. And this comes directly from the 812 Competizione. And this isn't the first time Ferrari have done that. They did a very similar thing with a Pista. The 12 cylinder is defined by its F140 HD power plant. 6.5 litre, 820 brake horsepower, 500 pound foot of torque, 0 to 62 in 2.9 seconds and a top speed of an advancement of 211 miles per hour. These are the same performance figures as the 812 Competizione and pretty much the same as the 812 Superfast and 812 GTS. But whereas those performance figures are the same, the rev limit is very different. The 812 Superfast will rev to 8,900 RPM, whereas the 812 Competizione and the 12 cylinder will rev to a heady 9,500 RPM. That is an incredible red line, 9,500 RPM. And that's due to its titanium com rods, lightened pistons and lightened crankshaft. So if we refer back again to the 488 Pista model that we referenced a little bit earlier on, what Ferrari did with the 488 Pista engine is they ported that 488 Pista engine, a specialized, lightened, tuned, in effect, blueprinted engine into the standard production model F8, which was their next advancement over and above the 488. Pretty much they've done the same here with the 12 cylinder. They've ported the 812 Competizione engine into the 12 cylinder to provide the same performance figures. I wonder if that's going to upset any of the 812 Competizione owners, much like it did with the 408 Pista owners. Mm, will be interesting to see. Unfortunately, the 12 cylinder will be impacted by certain emission regulations. So you're going to have particulate filters. And of course, these are going to restrict the sound coming out from that stunning V12. So you're paying for a stunning V12 and you're paying for the sound of a V12, of a Ferrari V12, but then it's muted with the particulate filters. One of the ways that Ferrari has tried to overcome the muted sound of the particulate filters is to tune the engine with equal length exhaust manifolds. Now what that means is if we look at cylinder 1 and to cylinder 6 on the right hand bank of the, of the engine block, 
The cylinder exhaust manifolds for cylinder one is going to be the same length as the exhaust manifold for cylinder six. And that means that's not going to be too much of a problem for cylinder one because cylinder one will come down this side into the, into the exhaust manifold downpipe. But cylinder six is going to have to loop all the way back on itself. So it's going to have to be engineered very intricately so that it doesn't foul anything so that it loops back on itself to be able to mold into the exhaust manifold downpipe. And that of course goes for cylinders two, three, four and five as well and exactly the same on the left hand bank now it's not understood fully how that will impact the sound it probably will still be quite muted because at the end of the day particulate filters do have quite an impact on the sound on the oral sound of the of the v12 engine i guess we'll find out when the car goes into production but the word is to overcome this problem with regards to the perception of the driver and its passenger they're going to port a lot of the sound into the internal cabin of the car so they're going to modify the sound deadening of the internal cabin of the car and tune certain certain oral sections of the car to be able to bring that sound more into the cabin of the car. So it may be muted for the people outside, but the experience from the point of view of the driver and its passenger will be sublime. Again, we don't know that for sure yet, but this is what we're hearing. For the dual clutch transmission for the 12 cylinder, they've introduced an eight speed DCT, so an extra gear over the Air 12 Competizione. And there's a smoother torque flow between those eight gears when compared to the Air 12 Competizione. And this is sort of what you'd expect because you'd expect the Air 12 Competizione to be more leery in its gear shifting. However, having said that, they've also improved this, the efficiency of shifting between the gears for that eight speed DCT by 5% over the Air 12 Competizione. So maybe it is going to slam you back in your seat. I guess we won't know until a car goes into production. If you enjoyed the video so far, please give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, very, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. Looking at some of the design cues of the 12 cylinder, of course, you've got this classic reference to the 365 GTB4 in effect the Daytona. This was nicknamed the Daytona. It wasn't of course nicknamed or known as the Daytona by Ferrari. It was known as the 365 GTB4. Here you can see the front of the car takes those reference cues from the 365 and I think that looks glorious. I think it looks fantastic the way they've designed the front of the car. The way the front slopes down to the front 365-esque section and with the headlight in, headlights heralding very very much back to the 365. The only bit I don't like is this middle section that separates the two headlights. That's got to be in black. I believe you're not allowed to option that as body colour and I think that's a mistake. I think you should be able to option that in body colour but again we won't fully know until later on but that's the word at the moment. You can see here for side lights you've got this new light bar which goes round to the side of the car as well, round the side of the wing or fender as they say in America. When comparing the side profiles of the 599 the F12 and the 812 with the 12 cylinder. I think it's a lot smoother. I actually much prefer it. I wasn't that keen on the 812 and the F12 when they were first launched, but as soon as the 12 cylinder was launched, I really liked it. I think it's a lot cleaner transition. When you consider that this car was styled internally, it wasn't styled by Pininfarina or by Bertone. I think they've done really well with the styling. And I, I, for me, I really, really like this styling. I instantly like the styling of the 12 cylinder. I'm probably in the minority there because I've heard a lot of people who don't like the new styling of the 12 cylinder, but for me, it's a positive. Moving to the back of the 12 cylinder, you can see instantly the design references to the Ferrari Roma. This big expanse of glass on the tail, if you like, hatch lid or tailgate. And also the way that the rear lights are designed, very, very similar, almost identical in some ways to the Ferrari Roma. And then when you look at the rear diffuser and the rear bumper, the rear bumper section looks very, very much, very, very similar to the Ferrari Roma. And then the rear diffuser is definitely the same design as the Roma, only it's like it's on steroids. It's a lot thicker, the rear diffuser, but very much the same design. Obviously the 12 cylinder rear tailpipes are very different to the Roma, where you've got these big box section square rear tailpipes to really pronounce or really give the perception of power output that would be coming from those big square rear exhaust tailpipes. One of the key design cues and advancements over the 812 range is this implementation of active aero for the rear haunches of the 12 cylinder. Now these rear sections of the 12 cylinder, they come up at speeds over 37 miles per hour and then drop down from, from under 37 miles per hour. So they come up obviously to increase downforce, so they improve stability at higher speeds. Interestingly enough though, this active aero, these flaps drop down at speeds over 190 miles an hour to reduce drag. However, there is a 25 millimeter lip at the back of the car 
car that increases downforce as well now it isn't a wing it's just a natural progression of the rear tailgate so that obviously increases downforce where the airflow comes over the front of the car over down the side and over the rear haunches and down and hits this 25 mil rear lip to improve downforce so that downforce will be there over and above the rear haunch active arrow whether or not the active arrow is up or down interestingly as well the 12 cylinder is 15 percent stiffer than the 812 range that's a substantial improvement moving to the interior of the car and to the electronics the dash of the 12 cylinder is very similar to the roma and the pura sangue in its layout the key difference when comparing the 12 cylinder layout to the pura sangue and indeed the roma is that the center console of the 12 cylinder has this 10 and a quarter inch active screen now when i say active screen of course it's a flipping touch screen but it's not overwhelming unlike the ferrari roma which has this whacking great ipad as a center console thankfully with the 12 cylinder they've tuned that back to a 10 and a quarter inch touch screen but unfortunately they do have some key operations behind that touch screen such as managing the heating and the heated seats etc but it is what it is you can't get away from it at the moment the 12 cylinder coupe model comes with three options for the roof glass aluminium or carbon fiber and it's hoped with the glass option that you'll have the option for electrochromatic capability so you'll be able to in effect tint that large expanse of glass so how is it going to drive well i'm going to put my neck on the line here and of course this is all speculation because nobody knows until a car goes into production but i think it will be a little bit more agile than the 812 range and the 812 competition shown why well because it's 20 millimeters shorter and you'd say okay well 20 millimeters that's naff all but when you're looking at these sort of fine tolerances it does make a difference and of course you've got the rear wheel steering of the 812 range as well although that's been more finely tuned as well so in effect rear wheel steering provides in or gives the perception or give the, gives the advancement of lengthening the wheelbase over a certain speed and reducing the wheelbase under a certain speed. So in effect, it provides more stability over a certain speed by having rear wheel steering and provides better maneuverability at slower speeds for its turning circle, say for example. Of course, you've got this additional gear now as well with the 12 cylinder over and above the 812 range. Is that gonna provide more performance? Is there gonna be a torque shift towards the upper range of that eight speed gear? We don't really know yet. We're hearing that the torque profile is going to be advanced or more advanced for the 12 cylinder across from gear one to gear eight, but we don't really know how that's going to be represented in delivery of power. It could be that they use that eight speed as a bit of an overdrive gear to improve efficiency for motorway driving, say for example, because at the end of the day, it is a GT car, but we don't know for sure yet. So wrapping it up now and bringing out some conclusions. We can see that the 12 cylinder is a striking progression from the 812, especially when we compare it with the 599 and the F12. And to me, it's a cleaner line now. It's a lot cleaner lines than the F12 and the 812, and I much prefer it. Like I say, I instantly like the 12 cylinder design, whereas I didn't necessarily like straight away anyway, the 812 and the F12 designs. It's got an extra gear there, so that should improve efficiency it's a gt range but it's a ferrari v12 so are you really going to be looking at fuel efficiency but you've got that smoother perceivably smoother transition of torque between that first and eighth gear so that could improve the progression of delivery of performance between those eight speed gears depending on how ferrari have designed that torque profile between that eight speed gearbox between those eight cogs it could be that it's designed to slam you more back in your seat because of that five percent improvement in shift speed or it could be that that eighth speed is going to be more of an overdrive gear to improve fuel efficiency and i think the reason that i really like the 12 cylinder design is because of that hark back to the 365 i really love the frontal design of the 12 cylinder apart as i say from that frontal section which looks like it's going to only be able to be optioned in black or carbon fiber i think that should be able to be optioned in body color to break it up a bit but when you look at the frontal design and it's cues back to the 365 which are definitely there i think that's a great improvement and i think that's a real good design cue for the 12 cylinder and then when you look at the rear of the car the way they've implemented the Roma back end in effect or a lot of the design cues from the Roma back end it really blends in well with the 12 cylinder design features and of course you've got that rear diffuser section which pretty much is the same design as the Ferrari Roma as though it's on steroids now this situation that you've got with the front design of the 365 of that front middle section between the headlights you've also got this situation with the aero flaps on the rear haunches at the moment it's perceived that they can only be optioned black or carbon fiber you cannot 
option them in body color. I think those rear aero haunches, I think they should be able to be optioned in body color and that will really break up all that large expanse of black. Now getting on to the edgy point of pricing, Ferrari have announced that the base price for the coupe edition would be around £338,700 and the base price for the GTS Spider edition will be around £373,000-£374,000. That's a lot when you when you consider that's a base price. So that means for the Spider, definitely you're going to be over £400,000. That is an awful lot of money. It's not even a limited edition model and you're talking about over £400,000 spec and on the road. It makes you wonder if Ferrari are trying to move the Ferrari brand even more elitist away from perceivably the availability that Easy Finance provide, provided some years back when, it, when you had finance figures of around 3-4% and people were were perceivably able to easily buy these Ferraris. I do wonder if Ferrari is trying to price the range now to try and make it a lot more exclusive to its real extensively wealthy client base. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Looping back to a point that I raised at the very beginning of the video that the 12 cylinder is going to be the last Ferrari naturally aspirated front mid-engine GT. Well we feel that Ferrari are going to hang on to that 12 cylinder, that V12 power plant until kicking and screaming it's have to be dragged into the hybrid era. Because as I detailed earlier, the V12 model range is the flagship GT range for Ferrari. The whole model range, the whole production run for Ferrari for all their cars was kicked off with a front mid-engine V12 125S that, and that was naturally aspirated. I think they're going to hold on to that naturally aspirated V12 power plant until they absolutely have to conform. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below.